قل هذه سبيلي أدعو إلى الله على بصيرة أنا ومن اتبعني وسبحان الله وما أنا من المشركين الصلاة والسلام على رسوله الكريم سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين نشهد أنه بلغ الرسالة وأدى الأمانة ونصح الأمة وكشف الأمة وجاهد في الله حق جهاده حتى أتاه اليقين إخوتي في الله ستكون هذه الكلمة خليطة ما بين العربية والإنجليزية وأنا أذكر هنا أذكر نفسي وإياكم بحديث النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم حديث أبا هريرة قال أبا هريرة رضي الله عنه قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم من يأخذ عني هذه الكلمات فيعمل بهن أو يعلم من يعمل بهن فقال أبا هريرة أنا يا رسول الله قال فأخذ بيدي فعد خمس قال اتق المحارم تكن أعبد الناس وارض بما قسم الله لك تكن أغنى الناس وأحسن إلى جارك تكن مؤمنا وأحسن إلى الناس وحب للناس ما تحب لنفسك تكن مسلما ولا تكثر الضحك فإن كثرة الضحك تميت القلب عباد الله الرافض صلى الله عليه وسلم أما النبي النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم حديث كان أي يلي حديث كان أي يلي النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أبا هريرة وحي هي أبو هريرة سر رضي الله عنه the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم came to him or came to the Sahaba and he said to them who's going to take these words from me and implement or to teach someone who was going to implement them. فقال أبا هريرة أبا هريرة رضي الله عنه said أنا يا رسول الله I will take these words. Now the beginning of the hadith you need to understand something that is important. Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam يقول من يأخذ عني هذه الكلمات فيعمل بهن أو يعلم من يعمل بهن هذا هو الشرع الذي يتقدم ليأخذ بهذه الكلمات عليه أن يعمل بهذه الكلمات أو يعلم من يعمل بهن هذا هو الشرع وهذا الدليل يا عباد الله أن العلم ليس للجمع فقط ليس له ليس للإنسان أن يتعلم شيء فلا ينفع نفسه بها ولا ينفع غيره بهذا العلم لذلك النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم كان هذا هو الشر الشر أن يعمل هذا الإنسان بهذا الحديث أو يعلم من يعمل به This is the condition of the hadith. That the person who is going to take these words must implement them or he has to teach someone who will teach to someone who will implement them. And this is again, this is the purpose of now. It's for you to learn and apply. But perhaps everything that you learn may you may not be able to, may not be able to apply. Therefore, your responsibility and your job is to teach someone who can, apply, who can apply this knowledge that you have just gained. So the Messenger of Allah gave Abu Huraira five things to do. He said, أَعْبَدَ النَّاسِ He said, be aware of haram things and you will be the most devoted servant of Allah. 
أكثر الناس يدندنون حول الأعمال الصالحة وكيف الإنسان لا بد من الإنسان أن يزيد من عمله وأن يزداد من حسناته بزيادة عمله لكن في هذا الحديث لخص النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم هذا الأمر وقال اتقد محارم تكون أعبد الناس الله رفي بود they think they think if they do more good deeds they would be closer to Allah سبحانه وتعالى and the messenger of Allah is teaching the Sahaba and is teaching us it's not <coughs> the reality is not how much good deeds you do you do only it is also how many bad deeds you avoid this is what we don't understand if you want to succeed you got to avoid evil deeds that's very crucial and very important so the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said if you want to be the one of the most devoted servants of Allah if you want to be a salih if you want to be a mu'min then in this situation you avoid evil deeds in hadith sahih al-bukhari sahih al-bukhari wa sunan al-tirmidhi wa ghayri min hadith anas bin malik إن لم تخن الذاكرة يقول جاء ضمان بن ثعلب إلى النبي صلى الله عليه أو دخل إلى المسجد النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم فقال أين ابن عبد المطلب فأشار إليه قال إني سائلك ومشدد عليك فلا تجد في نفسك علي حاجة للصحاب by the name ضمان بن ثعلب he came to the Masjid al Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he did not even know the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So he said to the Messenger, to the Sahaba, where is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Where is the son of Abd al Muttalib? So he went to, they said, this is the Messenger of Allah. He came to him <clears throat> and he said, I'm asking you questions and I'm going to be very stern, very harsh very strong in my approach. So do not find any ill feeling in your heart towards me. He said, ask. قَالَ إِنَّ رَسُولَكَ قَالَ أَسْأَلُكَ بِالَّذِي رَفَعَ السَّمَاءَ أَبِلَا عَبْدِ وَبَسَطَ الْأَرْضِ وَنَّصَبَ الْجِبَالِ أَلَّهُ أَرْسَلَكَ It's the first question. I ask you by the one who raised the heavens with no pillars. I ask you by the one who flattened the earth. I ask you the one who mountained the mountains. Did Allah send you? Did Allah send you? The messenger of Allah said yes. Then he asked him and he said to him, Inna rasulaka yaz'um. He said the man that you sent him to teach us at Islam is claiming that we have to pray five daily prayers. Allahu amaraka bihada, did Allah order you to do this? Qala, yes. Qala wallah, qala alayya ghayruha. Do I have to do anything than praying five daily prayers? He said, no. He said, I don't have to do wit? No. I don't have to do sunan? No. I don't have to do nawaf? No. I don't have to do anything else? No. Alayya ghayruha. He said, no. قَالَ إِنَّ رَسُولَكَ يَزْعُمْ The man that you send is claiming that Allah ordered us to perform to, 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 to perform siyam. He said, yes. He said, do I have to do anything else? No. So he asked the five pillars of Islam and every, each one of them he would say, Wallahi, I would not do anything extra. Then when the man left, he said, أَنَا الظِّمَانِ بِنُ, بن الثعلم, I'm binan, I'm, I'm, my name is Uthman bin Thalab, and I will not do anything other than the five pillars of Islam. So the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Man arada an yandura ila rajul min ahli al-jannah, fal yandur ila hadha. He said, if we ever want to see a man from the people of Jannah, then take a look at this man. Ibn Hajj al-Asqalani, he said, 
The reason that the Messenger of Allah said this man is from the people of Jannah because he avoided committing evil sins. So the hadith is saying if you want to be one of the most devoted persons, don't increase the level of your salah. Don't increase the level of your recitation. Don't increase the level of the number of Quran that the changes of you read that you read per day. Just avoid maharim. Avoid haram things. And you would be the one of the most devoted servants of Allah. Second, he said, be, be satisfied, be content what Allah has provided for you and you will be the most, the most richest man. Or you will be the richest man. Why? Because if you don't have qana'a, if you don't have qana'a, if you don't have contentment in your heart, then you will never be satisfied regardless how much money Allah has given you. Have you not seen the rich people and how they work, how they try to earn more and more and more? Every time that you, you, have, you have something, you want more. مِنْ طَبِيعَةِ بَنِي آدَمْ From the nature of Bani Adam that he's greedy. He wants more and more. So here, subhanAllah, sometimes your nafs can make you greedy. Like, you know, our neighbor's president, Trump. You know, he was a wealthy man. <clears throat> he said, it's not enough to be wealthy. I want to be a star. I want to be a celebrity. I want to be someone that the media always show, talks about. Then he created his own show. He said, now I'm famous. I don't want to be famous. I want to be a politician. I want to be the president of the United States. So, and he wants more and more and more. If you want this dunya, it will never stop. But look, subhanAllah, Umar ibn Abdul Aziz. He said, I have a nafs that is greedy. Umar ibn Abdul Aziz. He said, I have a nafs that wants more. But he directed that desire towards Akhir. And he said, I wanted to marry, I wanted to be the Amir of the city of Medina. So Allah gave me that. I wanted to marry the daughter of the Amir, Fatima. Allah gave me that. I desire to be Amir al Mu'mineen. Allah has given me that. And now I desire to be from the people of Jannah. See, his, his desire was completely different. Fatima, his wife, when he was, he was dying, ya, she said, he said to me, ya Fatima, اخرجي, ara min al -ins wala min al -jin. He said, Fatima, leave the room. Indeed, I see people, I, I see things. They're not humans, no from the jinn. And she said, I left the door and I closed the door behind me and he said to them, Marhaba bikum, marhaba bikum, talama intidhar. We say, you know, welcome, welcome, I have been waiting for you. So here the messenger of Allah is saying, if you become content whatever Allah has given you, then you would be one of the richest people. The third point, قَالَ وَأَحْسِنْ إِلَىٰ جَارِكَ تَكُنْ مُؤْمِنًا He said, be good to your neighbor and you will be a mu'min. Your neighbor, he did not say your Muslim neighbor, your Somali neighbor, your, you know, your cousin neighbor, any neighbor. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fi sahih muslim qal, قال النبي صلى الله من كان يؤمن بالله واليوم الآخر فليحسن إلى جاره وفي البخاري من كان يؤمن بالله واليوم الآخر فليكرم أو فليكرم جاره أو كما قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم هنا يا إخوتي في الله 
The Messenger of Allah, he said, whoever believes in Allah and on the Day of Judgment, let him be good to his neighbor. Neighbors at different levels. Neighbor who is your relative and a Muslim and a neighbor. That one has three rights over you. A neighbor who is your neighbor and a Muslim that has two rights over you. A neighbor that is non-Muslim but he's your neighbor that has one right over you. And haqqad jab is so great that the Messenger of Allah said in Sahih al-Bukhari, ما زال ما أولا زال يوصيني جبريل بالجاري حتى ظننت أنه سيورث. He said Jibreel keep advising me concerning my neighbor to the point that I thought that my neighbor would inherit me. So I'm asking you, Ibad Allah, how is your relationship with your non-Muslim neighbor? How is he? Do you think your neighbor, if your neighbor is going to other, this other place other than Jannah, do you think he will say, Ya Allah, I had a good Muslim neighbor and he was so good to me, yet I did not accept his son. Or he will say, Ya Allah, the one that I saw, the Muslim that I saw amongst the Muslims, he was my, was my neighbor, was loud, was not clean, he was disrespectful, he was, you know, he had no rights or understanding of the rights of the name. Nevertheless, the third, the fourth one he said, he said, I like what you like for other people and you will become a Muslim. Love for other people what you love for yourself and you will become a Muslim. Then you will reach the level of an Islam. So this is the the Messenger of Allah said, treat people the way you like to be treated. Treat people the way you like to be treated. You want people to respect you, so respect others. You want people to talk to you with dignity, well talk to them with dignity. You want them to be kind to you, then be kind to them. You don't want them to backbite you, then do not backbite them. You don't want them to talk about your faults and your shortcomings, then do not talk about their faults, shortcomings and faults. And this is how the Messenger of Allah said, if you want this, then you follow this. The last one, Ya Ibad Allah, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Do not wara tukfir al-dhahik fa inna kathrat al-dhahik to meet al-qad. He said, do not laugh too much. Indeed, too much laughter will kill the heart. Here, you got to understand, laughing is not haram. But to take your life and accept it as entertainment, and when you see someone you want him to entertain you you sit and listen to a lecture you want the lecturer to entertain you you want to watch you want to watch shows that would entertain you you want to watch comedy you want to spend your time entertaining yourself these are the things that islamically is discouraged so the nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is saying wala tukthiru dhahik fa inna kathrat dhahik tumitu al-qalb wa jazakumullah khair Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.